Michele Tome, I'm the Secretary General of the PICC, the Italian Chamber of Commerce. I would like to thank you, uh, Martin, uh, to join us, to give her time and uh, experience to share with us today. As you know from uh, our flyer and advertisement, today Martin will, is going to talk about uh, intergenerational management. So how to manage uh, intergeneration in a workplace. Uh, we challenge this uh, in, uh, in Thailand, you know, our workforce is uh, usually much younger than the one that we have, for example, in Europe. Uh, Martin Chaillet uh, from Eurize, founder of Eurize, uh, uh, she will give us uh, uh, experience and uh, an overview uh, by working in uh, Thailand and Southeast Asia for many, many years. Uh, so now I would like to leave our virtual stage uh, to Martin and uh, I will give you like a, a virtual round of applause. Thank you a lot again for your time. Thank you everybody to be there and uh, sharing about uh, this uh, topic that is uh, quite a challenge <laughs> uh, because we will see that uh, the different generation uh, that are working uh, uh, right now are quite different with different values and uh, uh, different needs. Uh, and so the purpose here is uh, to uh, discover the different generation uh, and to, 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 especially I will give you some tips about uh, the Y generation. Uh, I'm very happy to, to share with you around this topic because uh, I had, uh, I, am, I was facing uh, the, the problem of uh, inter intergenerational management as manager myself. Um, I've trained uh, quite a lot of teams around this subject, especially uh, in the medical field where uh, there are quite a lot of uh, senior boomers and quite a lot of white generation too. Uh, and uh, I'm supporting uh, now leaders uh, in uh, better understanding uh, the different generation and developing uh, special specific skills to manage uh, the different generation itself and to make them work together. So I will share, I, will, I hope it will be okay. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> uh, so uh, very, very quickly, uh, my profile with an experience of 15 years and manager and member of the board. Uh, I'm certified coach uh, for uh, 16 years now. And uh, I'm the co-founder and CEO of a Thai company that is uh, located in Bangkok called eRise. And our mission is to bring performance and excellence in different uh, expertise like leadership, strategy and change, and operational excellence. Very quickly. Um, I hope it will be okay. <laughs> uh, if uh, some people can uh, unmute uh, the microphone and uh, um, tell me uh, what is for them a generation, because it's quite um, an important concept to know what is for you a generation. MJ, can you uh, unmute uh, some uh, microphone so that I can hear some people? If I can just go Answering? Those, I will. So, um, like, as I would see it, I'd say that a generation would be, normally we say it's like 25 years, right? Yes. Like a, I guess it's a, a statistical generation, uh, but then I would say it's more related to uh, a set of people in a population that share same beliefs and, and behaviors and views of the world. Right. And, right. And, course, and normally they ha there's some kind of difference in age, right? <laughs> so kind of related, right? The world we grow right. kind of shapes all this, right? Very good definition. Uh, maybe somebody has can uh, can speak. Uh, Martin, we have a comment which says um, a generation is a cycle of age, usually about twenty five years apart. Right. So for you, it's the definition of a generation, yeah. And uh, other definition. 
So maybe we can go on because it's not that easy on, on, uh, on Zoom. Uh, it's, very, it's a very uh, important concept to know because uh, the concept of generation can be uh, defined in uh, four ways. Uh, first, uh, family. Uh, most of the time, it's the first concept that is coming when I'm asking the question. Uh, I mean, uh, there are the kids, the parents, the grandparents, etc. This is a generation. Uh, the, the second is demographic. Uh, there are, that are people uh, born at the same time, roughly at the same time. And the, the two last ones are the, 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 the most interesting ones. Uh, we are speaking about political and historical uh, point of view. And uh, that means that uh, mobilizations and uh, collective experience, uh, I mean some particular events, uh, conflicts, etc., create a sort of collective identity. For example, uh, okay, I'm French, so I well know the, the, the concept in France. We are speaking about a 68 generation or a Mitterrand generation. Uh, in, uh, in the US, so that can be uh, the Vietnam War generation, etc. So, and uh, um, that leads uh, us to the, the fourth uh, concept that is social, uh, that is a combination of democratic uh, and historical point of view, uh, meaning that a group of individuals that uh, are defined by the same age, so 20, 25, etc., years. Uh, characterized by a common historical experience. Why? Because, okay, uh, the, the, the quote is quite old, <laughs> dated from uh, 1926, but some other people are, um, confirmed the demonstration of Karl Mannheim, saying that uh, being confronting with similar circumstances at roughly the same age, um, encourages, promotes, generational crystallizations. And that's exactly what was said before, I mean, uh, that, um, that uh, promotes uh, a sort of same behavior, reflexes, attitudes, values, and needs. That's why uh, when we are speaking about uh, these uh, different generations, uh, we are underlining what happened, uh, the, the, the words, the, the background in which uh, the different generations uh, are grown. It helps us to better understand the different generations. Is everything, is everybody okay? Yeah, yes, Martin. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's okay. <laughs> okay, just uh, interrupt me if uh, something is not clear because I, I cannot really uh, see you nor hear you. Okay, so uh, a generation, a group of people um, that are around the same age and that have lived roughly the same thing and have developed a common, a sort of common behavior, common attitudes and common values and needs. Of course, not everybody, uh, um, the, the concept of generation, we would see the different generation. Uh, it's the kind of characterization of the different generation and the person can be described by more than uh, uh, the characteristic of the generation. But it's, impor it's, it's important to know uh, these things in order to better understand the people. Very, very rapidly, uh, the intergenerational management challenge. Very rapidly, because uh, uh, it's more than, and that is all the difficulty. Uh, first, what is difficult is that uh, people have to uh, manage each uh, generation, and sometimes it's quite difficult when it's far from our generation. Uh, and uh, the second challenge is really to make all generations work together. And the purpose of the challenge is really uh, to turn the, the, this challenge into an opportunity. Because uh, I really see, I've really seen that uh, when it's well managed in uh, in uh, in teams, uh, it's it's a richness. It's an opportunity. Um, every generation can bring something different to the other generation. Uh, let's go to the objective for this workshop. Uh, it's a great subject and uh, usually when I'm training around this subject, it's two or three days. Here we have less than one hour. 
so we won't be able to, to see everything. Uh, but the uh, first one, the first topic we will focus on is the good understanding of the different generations. Because uh, when the managers discover and know the different uh, characteristics of the different generations, it's a great advantage uh, for them to better manage their teams. So let's uh, go and discover the different generations, their differences, uh, what they have in common too, their qualities and their values and their needs. Uh, the, second, uh, the, the second criteria to succeed in intergenerational management uh, is some special knowledge and skills to individuals, the management of people of each generation. And that's why most of the time people we see here with the question, uh, they have problems to, uh, to, to manage uh, particularly the Y generation. So that's why I, uh, I have focused at the end of the workshop uh, on tips to manage uh, the Y generation. And uh, the third topic is uh, having some knowledge to promote cooperation because the managers cannot decide that there must be a cooperation between the generation. Uh, they have uh, to have some knowledge, some key uh, factors uh, to know better uh, about cooperation, about different uh, generation and how to, to promote the cooperation. So it will be too short here to, to, to speak about that, but it's, uh, uh, when I'm training around this subject, it's, it's, it takes me uh, maybe one day to speak about that. So in this workshop, I propose you to focus on uh, the, the, the two first points, on the first two points. So in organizations right now, uh, we have uh, three generations working together. Uh, can everybody, uh, 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 does everybody know about the name of the different generations? Maybe MJ, you can uh, unmute the microphone of uh, some people. Uh, yes, uh, some people can also leave in comments, so feel free to say. Or oh, yeah, 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 you can. Uh, but uh, I got uh, the generation Y, uh, seems to be on everyone's minds, Martin. Okay, why? And what about the others? Boomers, uh, any boomers here today? And of course, yes, Generation X. Millennial. Okay. Right. Okay. Uh, okay, yes, right. <laughs> You're right. Uh, so uh, you have three generations uh, in organization today. Uh, before there were veterans, but uh, uh, normally uh, the, the elder uh, working in the organization now are boomers. Uh, so I give you the, the date uh, just for you to know roughly uh, what is the age of uh, the, the, the people of each generation. Uh, sometimes you have some date into brackets because uh, not uh, everybody agrees on the, the real date, but it's roughly the same date. So the boomers are the elder people in, the, in uh, working uh, in organization, and they are born between uh, 45 and 65. Uh, then we have the X generation. X generation are usually born between 66 and uh, 80. Uh, X generation is also call, called the Gen X or Xers. And uh, we have uh, the famous Y generation. So Y generation, you can hear also millennials, uh, Gen Y or YNJ, Net generation, uh, or even uh, me generation. And uh, they are born between, okay, let's say uh, 81 uh, to uh, 2000. Uh, that means that uh, they're between late teens and uh, late thirties at the moment. Is it okay? I think most of the workforce right now uh, has this Y generation to millennials, like which Miguel said in the start, right, Martin? Uh, at least in Thailand. Uh, we have a three generations, so I will sorry begin with with boomers. 
But because of the one of the challenge today is really to make the three generations work together, together. And so uh, I will um, describe to the context in which uh, all the each of these generations uh, are have grown up, uh, so that uh, you can have. Uh, a better understanding of the different generation. And you will see that the world, the background, the context in which uh, the boomers grew up is very different from uh, the context in which the X and the Y grew up. That's why sometimes it's quite difficult to make them work together. Uh, so um, most of the studies have been led in uh, Europe and uh, US, uh, but uh, I've uh, added uh, um, some information um, that I picked up in uh, a lot of surveys that have been done in Thailand too. Because my question was, uh, are the different generations the same in Thailand than, uh, than, in, uh, than in Europe, for example? Uh, roughly speaking, uh, the boomers have experienced a world of full employment I mean, uh, when, they, when they left the job, they find back another job, a continuous growth. So the future was quite bright and better than the, than the present time. And the world was quite bi bi bipolar with the good and the villains. Uh, not where well they born, but after, <laughs> when they were adults, they invented the consumer society and uh, they believe in uh, social success. Um, in Thailand, in Thailand, the, so, the society was quite um, traditional, uh, with a Thailand that uh, was smaller than in terms of demographic uh, than uh, we know today. Uh, but the population uh, rapidly grew, and uh, it was a largely rural, with uh, only 20% of people living in cities, and agriculture was a, a dominant occupation. So. Okay, let's see uh, what do we have to know about the boomers is that, that uh, the, the, the future was quite bright, full employment. And uh, in Thailand, uh, the, 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 the population was quite traditional. So uh, the boomers in organization, how do, how do they behave? Uh, in Thailand, like in a Western uh, society, the same. Uh, what we can uh, tell about them is that uh, they respect the institutions and the organization. They have a, a strong respect in them, and uh, they are very loyal to companies and to hierarchy. And this is very important because we see it's not really the same with the white generation. And that's why some leaders have problem with the new generation. Uh, they seek for professional success, and they, what, it, what is also important is that they have an attraction for collective expression. It's very important that they have some time for uh, not only individual, but rather collective expression. Uh, what we can um, notice uh, um, in the present time is that there is sort of a discrete form of uh, generation segregation. Um, uh, with the boomers, and some boomers uh, are losing their motivation. And so sometimes it's quite difficult to make, uh, to have the motivation and work sometimes with the, with the new generation. So this is the boomers, the elder people we have in companies. And then we have uh, most of the leaders now that uh, are belonging to uh, the uh, X generation. So the X generation, the context in which uh, they grew up, uh, most uh, of, uh, of the time they experience a lot of changes, a lot of changes in a lot of things, uh, in, uh, in terms of entrepreneurship, society and technology. Okay, technology uh, is different from the Y generation. The Y generation, they are, they, they are, they are born in, in technology, with a mouse in the in the hand, it's not the case for the X generation. But they have they have had to uh, to learn um, uh, the technology, the, the, the different technology progress. Uh, they are marked by the economic crisis in Europe, 
in, uh, in the Western countries as well as, uh, as in Asia. Uh, the, the workers, so they have uh, lived a so collapse of values and shock of technological uh, revolution. Uh, so they have experienced, uh, unlike uh, the boomers, a period of uncertainty when they reach uh, the time they have to work. And uh, okay, it will impact uh, the, the way they are looking at uh, the, 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 the job, hierarchy, etc. In Thailand, it's the same. Uh, it was a, a period of in, uh, political instability uh, with terrorism and uh, governmental changing um, from a parliamentary system to military takeovers and civil rules again. So, uh, Gen X and organizations, um, we will see that uh, we have seen that the boomers were quite optimistic with, uh, with uh, the future and uh, with the companies. Uh, it's not the case of the X generation. Uh, what we can say is that they're generally skeptical about the future and not they don't really rely on uh, the hierarchy. Uh, sometimes they are discouraged by the word of work because uh, they have been dismissed or uh, new people that have been dismissed. Uh, and, and they lost confidence uh, that uh, previous generations could have in their superiors. And uh, they rely most of the time only on themselves. And we will see sometimes it's uh, uh, why there are some misunderstanding between the X and the new generations. In Thailand, they are uh, quite the same, but a bit more conformist than uh, the European X generation. And the famous Y generation. So uh, the Y generation, uh, what is important to know is uh, that uh, they, 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 they are born in an unstable world and uh, the, the world is quite ephemeral. Uh, they are born after two oil crises and uh, they have only heard about crises, unemployment, restructuring, increased competition, etc. Uh, there is a problem of generational solidarity. Uh, precarious start in working life. So uh, we will see uh, the results in Thailand as well. But uh, the, uh, what we can say is that the white generation in Thailand is not very different from the white generation in, in, in uh, Western countries. So in, for Western countries, in inter internships, small jobs, etc., uh, technology uh, for them is no problem, is an extension of their lives. And what is very important to know is also that they are used to multitasking. They are, okay, they know everybody uh, through the world <laughs> and the different cultures are at their fingertips. fingertips sorry. Uh, in Thailand, they witnessed uh, conflicts uh, with insurgents, war of drugs, tsunami, political instability as well. So the, the, the world is quite instable uh, for them too. Uh, advanced technology for them is the same. They are influenced by America, especially MTV, Hollywood movies, etc. And as uh, the white generation in uh, Western country, uh, they also struggle with uh, financially, with small, uh, sometimes three or four small jobs. So the start in uh, uh, working for them is not very easy too. Same thing than uh, as for uh, the counterparts in, uh, in Western countries. Um, what I have learned too for uh, people that are working in, uh, with Y generation in Thailand is, um, and what is quite surprising is what the, gen, the Y gen uh, race has more important uh, for them. Uh, the threats are drugs, economy, they are quite, uh, um, um, well, they, 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 they are quite uh, uncertain about the, the economy, the environment uh, topics, traffic problems, and what is important is the loss of Thai identity. Uh, Martin, we have a comment from Mr. Pierre who, who wants to add that uh, along, with yes. Hollywood, along with Hollywood and America uh, in Thailand, uh, there is a huge influence on Japan, Japan and Korea. 
Uh, right. Uh, yes, sorry. right. Also now, also now, yeah, right. You're right, Pia. You're right. They, were, they first were influenced by America and TV Hollywood movies, but you're right, Pia. Uh, now there are quite a lot of influence by uh, South Korea, the bands, etc. Uh, but also by Japan, that uh, is quite a um, model for them. You're right. Uh, so, but they are influenced by the exterior and it was not the same for the other generation in Thailand. Are there other questions or remarks or... Um, well, MJ? Well, okay. okay, thank you. Uh, so, what time is it? Okay, we have some, some, some more time. Uh, so the white chain and the organization. Uh, okay, it is quite difficult for some leaders now because they do not support uh, traditional hierarchy. That means that before, because you were the boss, the manager, uh, you were um, respected and uh, people are doing what you are saying. It's not really the case now. I think some leaders have experienced it. Um, you will be um, interested. Uh, you will be followed. Uh, if um, for, the, for them you are competent and you, you will support them. We will see that after with the tips of, um, for managing the white generation. But most of the time when uh, we speak about problems people have with the white generation, it's the first one that, uh, that is coming. They don't really support uh, traditional hierarchy. Uh, second thing to know, it's very, very important. They are waiting for a framework. It's like teenagers, you know, they need a framework. But what is quite difficult is they don't, they don't bear a very rigid authority. So you have to balance between authority and framework. And we're gonna see how you can balance it. The third thing that uh, we, you, you have to know if you are managing a white generation is that they are waiting. Yes? No? I thought there was a question. They are waiting for authenticity and transparency because now they can have all the information they, they, they want uh, on, on the web. And so, okay, they are waiting for leaders and companies authenticity and transparency. Uh, they want to be evaluated on their individual ability. They are self-directed. Self and what is very important is that, uh, okay, we will talk about what uh, uh, motivate them. So they are motivated by the wage, of course, but most of, most of the times they also have motiva are motivated by the work environment and a good life, uh, work-life balance. They are less loyal than, uh, than the X generation and less, far less loyal than uh, the, 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 the boomers. And they tend to change their job scope quite often. What is quite important also is that they don't really belong to a company, but they belong to a group of people that are working within the company. Uh, for them, the tribe is very, very important and the values, the value, and this is very important too, a lot of on the job training. That means that the, the, uh, they are waiting for their leaders that they, are, they train them, them on the job. They are uh, demanding a lot of time and support from, uh, from the manager. Uh, very rapidly, because I want to, okay, we have 10 minutes left before the, the Q&A. Uh, two, two more things are the different values and the different needs. Uh, okay, first, in Thailand, uh, the things, there are similarities between a generation and that are quite different from what we have in the Western countries. Uh, the the needs. What well, the values, uh, people must rate the values, different values, uh, Thai people. Uh, first value was security, very important for them. Second value, the second value uh, that are very important for uh, Thai people is social harmony. They really don't like conflicts. Uh, Self-respect and politeness, 
we won't have the same results uh, in Western countries. Uh, third thing is high importance based in social rank, benevolence, collectivism. Uh, group is very important for them. And conformity rather than openness to change. So if you, you want to introduce a change, it's quite difficult. You will uh, experience that it's quite difficult in China. The quality is not ranked as important for, for Thai people, no, no matter the, the, the generation. Here you have a comparison between the main values for Gen X and uh, for Gen Y. Uh, for Gen X in Thailand, uh, the first value is capability. Uh, for them, experience and training are very important for, uh, for, for Gen Y. And this is one of the things that is very uh, difficult for Gen X and uh, for, for boomers too, is that the uh, Gen Y wants a promotion now, <laughs> right at the beginning of, uh, of their working life. Uh, for the Gen Y, Gen X, the consistency and reliability are very important. They value responsibilities and reliability. And for Gen Y, what is important is more relation, like tribes are very important. Bonding some relationship with, uh, within the company, and outside the company is very important. For Gen Y, another value is obedience. Being polite, respect others, hierarchy is important too. And for uh, Gen Y, obedience is so important, but they are more, far more independent. They want to choose their goals, they want to choose their priorities, and they want to, choose, they want to be more independent than the, 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 the Gen Y, Gen X. So this is the comparison because Gen X and Gen Y. So, very rapidly between the boomers and Gen Y, uh, we have reliability that is very important for boomers, sense of responsibilities, leadership, and team spirit. Uh, so you, you, you see that uh, the values are very important for a generation and can be different. So what is important is uh, uh, that, every, that every generation uh, get to better know the other generation so that they, they can better understand each other. The needs are also quite different uh, with the boomers uh, that want to share, share their knowledge and they want to be involved in projects that uh, are have meaning for them. The Gen X want to grow in skills and they want to, to have some responsibilities and the Gen Y, they want freedom, flexibility, and individualization of management. Very rapidly, sorry for the, the lot of uh, uh, slides, uh, but uh, tips to manage uh, Gen Y, and then uh, I will open to questions and uh, sharing of experience. Uh, to manage the Gen Y, uh, you have to integrate their characteristics. Uh, that is a relationship, a different relationship with the company and uh, with the work. Okay, they, they, they have not the same relationship and you, you cannot find or get gain skits. Another thing what is, that is very important is that uh, they are very, for them, it's important to have win-win relationships. And it can be important uh, then after to, to, to better manage them. A uh, third thing that you, you have to, to integrate is the willingness to have a say, an initiative in how they are doing their job. And finally, what is quite positive is the primitive confidence in the future and quite a rejection of the constraints. So if I have three tips, there are four more, but three tips, three main tips to share with you if you want to manage the white generation is first we have seen that the framework is very important for them but a rigid authority they will reject a rigid authority so i think a framework is very important uh, but you have to explain your expectations and the roots of the company and we are, we are calling them the white generation why because they are 
they, they, they want you to, to, to know the sense of the different rules. If you don't give them the sense of the different rules, they won't follow you, follow you. They, won't, they won't follow them. Uh, and what is important, working with a lot of leaders now, is that you have to expect even wh what is very obvious for you. Because what is obvious for you is not necessarily very obvious for uh, the white generation. So be clear about your expectations. Be clear about the rules. Be very concrete uh, with the rules. What do you expect from them? Give sense to rules. Okay, uh, why, uh, why this rule? Why is it important for them, for the company, for the clients? And uh, what, what can be very, um, if, you have a, if you have somebody that, don't, that uh, doesn't follow the rule, you can uh, make a link to values. Maybe we, uh, I, I won't, I'm sure there will, there will be some cases uh, and some question about that. So, uh, but I have uh, concrete cases about that, a person that didn't want to do, follow the rules because she didn't understand the meaning of the rule. And so the, the leader uh, link uh, the, the rule to the values of this person and then the person decided him herself to follow the rule. The second thing is, okay, don't stop the desire of autonomy, the desire of autonomy of the white generation. They are enthusiastic. They want to do things. And uh, okay, this is very positive. Uh, but you have to frame their desire of, of autonomy. That means, okay, you do that, but limiting their scope of action. And okay, uh, following them, because anyway, they, they need a follow-up. And explaining the rest of the team uh, why you give them this kind of autonomy, this kind of project, because otherwise you will have frustration from the other generation. And last but not least, it's right for all the generation, but really the new generation need to know that you know them. <laughs> Uh, and uh, they, they need to be supported. And so it's very important to individualize as manager, uh, your management. Uh, what does it mean? It, it means that you have to know them personally. Uh, I mean, create a personalized uh, link with them. Uh, follow up closely, this is very important because they need to be followed up, even if you have the impression that they just want to do uh, uh, by themselves. They really need to be supported, controlled, okay, slightly controlled and supporting in their project. And what is important also is like, anyway you will be all, uh, you will be, uh, uh, you will be, uh, it's, it's uh, important that uh, you are able to be ready to negotiate with them because they are in a very win-win um, uh, situation and if you want to negotiate uh, it will be very it will be easier for you okay you can have that but okay I ask you to give me that or etc and uh, they are really in that win-win uh, um, uh, behavior uh, situation they are very uh, comfortable with that Okay, maybe we can uh, illustrate that uh, with questions you could have or some... Uh, uh, Martin, there are many questions. Yes. Uh, I'm going to read it out for you. Uh, and uh, anyone who wants to ask these questions can then uh, interact with Martin directly. But I will read out for you what is in the chat, Martin. Uh, so the first question is... Um, yes. I stopped the sharing. <laughs> Uh, regarding the interrelations between the generations, do you think that also the cross uh, the cross culture may negatively or positively influence the job environment? Uh, what are your thoughts about it? Of course, it's a <laughs> it's a difficulty. I would say there are some uh, different generation at the workplace, but uh, there are also different culture here in Thailand, uh, but not, not only in Thailand, but um, I mean, there are very, very 
great differences uh, between uh, different cultures uh, at the workplace. And uh, okay, it's a, it's another difficulty that uh, that uh, managers can find working is here with uh, different cultures. Uh, yeah, uh, sorry, uh, John is with me, working with me, yeah. and he's I'm, managers. Uh, I'm calling up Martin just, <laughs> just at one point on, on that, on that subject. In Thailand, as uh, tribes, but not, not only tribes, but collectivism is very important. You need to find on job environment how to bring this uh, collectivity and this uh, uh, collective environment within your organization. So including through uh, uh, the type of uh, uh, desk organization and things like that, and leaving uh, space for collectivism and for not only for the white generation, as Martin said about tribe, tribe system and so on, but the, all the other generation, they are very uh, willingness to work together. Uh, and that's a bit uh, a, diff, uh, a cultural difference within, for example, US, uh, in America, there are more individualist uh, people. So you need to put uh, on your job and environment something um, and ready to for collectivism. That's a, that's a, maybe an we example. can give an, uh, an example. Uh, Jean, stay with me. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah, uh, maybe we can uh, we can give a very concrete example because we are working with a company. Uh, okay, so problem of generation and culture. So maybe it will be uh, uh, nice to share with you. Okay, uh, the boss was uh, from Europe. And uh, most of the, the, the team uh, are white generation and they are Thai. And so for them, it's, it was very important to have some common time and some convenient time, <laughs> uh, a convivial time, you know, uh, they, they share something to, to eat, etc. And uh, the, the, the manager wants to uh, implement more performance in, uh, in the company and uh, she stopped every lunch time, uh, every common time, where people could uh, share even uh, professional information, etc. And it was very difficult and a lot of uh, people from one generation, they left the company. It's, all, it's first a problem of generation and second a problem of culture. Yeah. <laughs> in Europe, we think that uh, evening uh, dinner, but only informal dinner without speaking about the job, we think it's a waste of time and a waste of money. But in Thailand, it's not at all a waste of time or money. It's a way to connect themselves all together and to, uh, to reconnect outside of the work uh, environment. And it's very important. Thank you. Thank you, uh, both, both Martin and John. So I go to the, the second question. And this is very important because many of the people in the audience are, are managers. Uh, yes. and, and this is re related to changing of jobs, which is a very common problem in Thailand. Uh, so the first question is, is it possible that uh, someone just change a job because they are young? Uh, and the person says, when I was younger, I have changed work often to build up experience. <laughs> yeah, indeed it is. Yeah. But um, the main difference is about loyalty. So it's not only about age, <laughs> age difference, it's about loyalty. When the, the X generation wanted to change them, uh, most of the time they asked the HR or the manager to change them within the company. The Y generation, they want to change them. They even don't ask their manager or their company. They just ask their, uh, their friends outside the company, their tribes, uh, if there is another uh, working, uh, very nice balanced environment and something they could uh, experience from and they just leave the company and try to find elsewhere something uh, to build their experience. So it's, it's about loyalty, not only about being young. But yeah, you're right. There is a double phenomenon, the age, for, of course, and the generation. Uh, yeah, but what is interesting that uh, we see uh, some people that are going, out, that are quitting, leaving the company, and they come back to the comp uh, in the company and they come back with more experience. So, so sometimes it's okay for the company that they, 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 they leave the company because they bring back some more experience when they come back. This is a very common question. Uh, Martin, uh, even Mr. And Andrea says that young people must understand that changing a company and job every six months does not benefit the CV. 
uh, that wants to hire you will definitely avoid hiring someone that leaves in three months. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Maybe we can ask you this question that how can managers avoid this uh, to the best of their uh, knowledge uh, in Thailand? Because this is definitely a problem. Uh, so from your experience, how, how can we solve this problem? It's kind of a dilemma you know, because, uh, the, for example, the young people, they change every six months or every three months. And they change part of the time because uh, uh, we don't give uh, the company doesn't give them uh, initiative, experience, training, things like that. And the company on the other side, they want to have uh, more uh, uh, stable people, and they wait for six months or one year to invest in that people and to give them access to training to things like that. But with the white generation, it's counterperformance to do so. You need to deliver and to give them right now, right at the beginning, access to training, access to initiative, exactly like, like Martin said. And that's the way they will stay longer in the company. So it's kind of a dilemma. It's a counter-performance way with the Y generation regarding the X generation. With the X generation, they were willing to wait one or two years to, uh, to, to get access to training, to get access to project, to get access to initiative, programs, etc. In the Y generation, it's quite the opposite. If you don't give them access in the six first months, they will leave the company. But if you give access to, the, uh, to, to them to project, initiative, and such, such things in the first month, they will, uh, they will uh, stay in the company. So it's, it's very different from, uh, from the others. Yeah, it's quite different from the X generation. That's why most of the, the problem is that most of the leaders are, are, are belonging to the X generation and uh, the employees are belonging to the, to the Y generation. And uh, there are really great differences between the, the X and the Y generation. And so they don't understand uh, each other. Uh, the X generation say uh, that uh, the Y generation is like children. They need to be supported. Uh, we have to tell them uh, what to do. And so they want everything right now. Uh, it was not the case when they were uh, young and they began to work because they had to prove the company that uh, they, they, uh, they, they are qualified uh, to, to have a promotion. You know, it's, it's a world that is very different. And so they act uh, with the white generation exactly uh, the way their manager acted with them. The, the, the fact is that the, the, the society changed. And so if they don't share the attitude, then the white generation will leave. So anyway, okay, you, you have to be ready uh, to, to see some, uh, some people from one generation, even if you do everything to retain them, they, some, some of them will leave, of course. Mm -hmm. But it, you have to be okay with that. The purpose is that you don't uh, lose everybody <laughs> every six months, because this is very difficult to manage uh, for, for the leaders. And it's even more, more crucial in uh, Southeast Asia because in Southeast Asia, the unemployment rate is very low regarding other places in the world. And uh, with uh, an un unemployment rate very low, it tends to, uh, to make people change job uh, very quickly because they, they find another job very quickly also. So all these things are very, uh, uh, very fragile. So uh, if you want to attract talent, for example, uh, bring hackathons, hackathons is the way to work together, uh, uh, coming from a startup uh, environment, bring hackathons in your companies and you will see the Y generation very fun of that, uh, fun of doing these hackathons, even during the weekend, etc. Uh, so they will extend their balance, uh, their life of uh, the balance of their working and their personal life because hackathons uh, is very funny for them and the the boomers, the, the X generation will not like Akaton very, very much, but the boomer will, lo will love that also because it will be a, 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 collective, great expression, yeah, yeah. a collective expression and a great opportunity for them to bring their experience and, uh, and their knowledge. So that's kind of thing you can, uh, you can bring in your company. Yeah, anyway, all you can do uh, to, to make the different generation work together on a, well, I, I would say, um, uh, something that is useful for, for the company, for example, a topic, a very uh, uh, practical topic, 
uh, you have to and promote that in order to promote uh, the intergenerational management cooperation. And, uh, moving on, um, we have, a, a, I think, a very interesting point from Mr. Sandra, and he says that success in Generation Y Korea is not as important to them as their family and friends. Uh, yeah. Moreover, they are searching for new challenges and they have high expectations. Uh, Generation Y, on the other hand, often has excessive expectations, so it turns out that their reality is worse than expectation. Uh, would you have any yeah. comments, comments to this? That's right. Uh, actually, when I just a uh, precision, because when I said, okay, you have to meet their expectation, means that, okay, they have some willingness to do some things that they have some ideas. That doesn't mean that you have to take the ideas itself, okay? <laughs> because sometimes it's, uh, they cannot do it by themselves. But you have to find in the project they have, in the ideas they have, something that they can manage uh, to give them purpose in the company. And so, of course, if they arrive with a lot of ideas, uh, with a lot of enthusiasm, and you cut everything, okay, they, they, they won't lose uh, the, um, the enthusiasm, and it's very, it's a pity. Yeah. And also, you have an opportunity. The X generation, they wanted to express all their expectation within the company, which is not the case of the Y generation, as we said, because they want to spend more time with their family, with their friends, with their tribe, etc. So uh, part, of the, part of the solution is to give them freedom to experience expectation outside of the company. So to leave, that, to, to leave them time to do so or money to do so. So in big company, for sure, it's easier than in a uh, in small company. Uh, if we take Google and uh, you can spend 10% of your time of your business working paid time on the personal project you have, even you are in your garage and no more in, a, in the company and you can do so. Uh, so uh, for smaller companies, it's more complicated than for very big company, for sure. But this is an opportunity. You don't have to take on your shoulders every expectation the Y generation has. Uh, fortunately. You, yeah, fortunately, <laughs> because they have too many. So uh, you can uh, rebalance that on their family time, on their uh, tribe time, which makes uh, more balance also for you. Uh, you just have to be open to negotiate uh, a new thing, for, for example, a, a, a white guy or lady will ask you some free time to do something. Are you willing to do so? Because normally you won't. In your rules, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't uh, maybe it's, a, it's, a, uh, it's forbidden. So you have to, to negotiate about that. That's the point. And uh, one, uh, one more thing, because, uh, okay, family is very important. Friends are very important in Thailand and uh, in uh, Western countries too. But you, you have to, you can benefit from that. I mean, they have some uh, friends, they have a tribe uh, within the company. And uh, for them, they, they, they can do a lot of things. <laughs> so that means that they can express more cooperation that the X generation is expressing. Uh, because there is a tribe inside the company. Second thing, uh, the, the frontier uh, between work and the personal life is not so clear for the wild generation. I think you are, all have experienced that. Uh, but you can also benefit from that because if you have a problem, ask uh, some, uh, a person from the wild generation, you always know a friend who know a friend that can give us the solution. Mm -hmm. So you see. And about the time, for example, they want to go out of the job at five because it's five, uh, let's say, uh, uh, in the company as uh, rules but they don't mind to pick up again their phone and answer a customer or a friend inside the organization at 9 p.m. because it will be important for tomorrow to do so. So uh, this is kind of, uh, uh, um, let's say... Uh, uh, it's a win-win situation. Uh, win -win I was yeah, for yeah. them, it's a win-win situation. They, they, they want to go out because they want to do sports or to meet their friends at 5 p.m. But in fact, they, they are willing to go back to... Uh, work uh, uh, activities at 9 p.m. because they need to uh, for tomorrow morning. Uh, so that's very different. Uh, I have just an example. Someone, uh, someone, uh, um, uh, someone uh, uh, talked on the phone with us at, uh, on Sunday. I was very surprised, but he, he was a young guy. There was something, an opportunity on Monday. He didn't 
bring the opportunity on, 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 on a Friday afternoon because maybe he was not working on Friday afternoon, but on, on Sunday morning, he picked up his phone to see if it was possible to do something on Monday. So that, that's happening. Yeah, sometimes it's not uh, possible according to the, the activity. Uh, so in that case, you have to explain the rule uh, how it's important for uh, the others or the collectivity, for example. And sometimes you can do things uh, in a win-win situation, like a negotiation. Next question, okay. maybe. Well, Rita, the next one. Um, uh, it is not a burden for a company to have a micromanagement for Gen Y staff. Uh, usually, management is to understand and delegate. Uh, doing micromanagement does not require that a company must have more managers to do this micromanagement. Yes, <laughs> totally agree with that. I no, totally agree with that. Uh, the, the micromanagement, uh, I, um, individuals' management, uh, just, um, uh, how to say, just require that we know the, we are interesting in other persons, uh, that uh, we know quite a little bit about the functioning of uh, different persons. And so, okay, only for following them, supporting them, empowering them is very important. That doesn't mean that you have to add a lot of managers, and even more managers uh, will be could be a problem because uh, this will be rigidity. This will be bring rigidity and uh, the contrary of individual management. And the uh, X generation, they are not used to do so because um, uh, Martin said you need to be very specific, very precise, very clear on expectation, even the obvious one, uh, on framework and things like that. So it is as if the guy or the lady you work with is not competent or is not relevant enough to do the job. So as an X generation, we've been learned, I'm, I'm an X generation, we've been learned that uh, with that type of guys, you must micromanage because it, it won't be reliable on the task. It is not the case with the Y generation. They want a the very precise framework, but it's all about boundaries and the sense of, uh, of, the, of the work. And after, they want to have great initiative within the, the work itself, on the way to do the work, etc. And so you need to, uh, to step back and to let them live and be, and, and not to micromanage, uh, which, uh, which becomes a burden, as, as Andrea <laughs> said, very, very, very real. I move on to the next question. Uh, since Generation Y is going to be the next leading generation, which are your forecasts on Generation Z and the next next ones? The next leading generation, and which are your forecasts? <laughs> okay, there are some studies about uh, about uh, Gen Z, but not so precise as uh, the one we have on uh, Y Gen. Uh, what we know about uh, that generation is like um, it's like there are uh, some uh, white gen but amplified. <laughs> uh, that means uh, more diapers, uh, more autonomy. Uh, they, uh, they want more autonomy, but uh, they need a very straight uh, um, framework. And uh, okay, so I think. I don't, I don't, well, I think maybe, well, maybe I'm wrong, but uh, maybe it will be easier for them uh, to manage the, 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 the generation. My, my question to myself is, I don't think that uh, the, 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 cl the classical uh, type of companies we have now is really suited for the white generation uh, and for the Z generation, maybe we, I think we will uh, we will see a mutation of companies. Uh, for example, but it happens with the COVID nineteen <laughs> now. But for example, remote yeah. working, uh, working some days at uh, at your job uh, office and some other days at your home or uh, other places, is very uh, uh, common and very. Uh, a uh, very open uh, thing for Z generation and for also Y generation. It was not the case in the precedent uh, generation. So that, that, uh, that may again amplify the, uh, uh, the kind of uh, um, um, uh, difference of balance between uh, work and, uh, and personal life, which is very different. Uh, 
uh, for the boomers, for example, they were, uh, they were at the job or they were at home and it was, uh, they didn't combine that. So, so it's, very, it's very different to that. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, uh, yeah, I'm quite sensible to that point because I was quite, uh, I was working frequently in, uh, in France with hospitals and clinics. It's a really a traditional uh, institution and there are a lot of white generation and they have a lot of troubles with that uh, because uh, in hospitals there are quite a big rigidity and uh, the, the, that doesn't fit at all the expectation and the white generation. So they begin really to change in terms of structures, process, type of management, but uh, there are still a lot of work to do. <laughs> And there is another question, last one from Michele. Yes, yes, please. Um, if, if you want, I will read it out. Um, do, okay. do you believe these labels can help managers to better manage on a daily basis? I focus on individual and performance. For example, about what the company can do to benefit the employer and which benefit the employee can generate for the business or what benefit employees can have from work? These libraries can help to better manage. Uh, in fact, for example, the white generation, they are not so much interested in, in to uh, uh, generate business for the companies. It's not the, the first uh, 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 key uh, asset for them or the first key levers for their performance. So if you are only focusing on performance and KPIs, it doesn't work with the white generation. Would it be at individual a point or a collective point. Uh, the main things, for example, uh, which was interesting in, uh, in the Thai presentation, uh, I don't, uh, uh, I, I'm not sure you, you, you catched it when, uh, when Martin said, is for example, the white generation, the Thai white generation, they have a very sense of belonging, of being Thai, okay? So let's say uh, what could do the company, not only on individual basis, would be to, uh, to be more, Thai-based company, so to, uh, to implement even Thai culture, even within international companies. That could be things, not individual, but very collectively point to uh, enhance their performance. And uh, as a result, to enhance the performance of the company for sure. So it's not uh, only about having KPIs, etc. Even though the white generation, they ask for individual uh, performance review. In fact, they are very collectivist. So that, that's a bit different. Well, uh, I agree with you. The performance is very important for the for the business because uh, if you are not performance, you cannot uh, keep the, the employees, of course. But uh, if you have some employees uh, that are motivated, and uh, uh, then uh, you, you you will be more performant. So it's all the the balance uh, between motivation and uh, also process and projects and uh, uh, the the way uh, the company uh, is. Uh, uh, can motivate his employees, and um, yeah, it's it's okay. We we talk about uh, intergenerational uh, management, but uh, of course uh, we can talk about uh, we can we could talk about <laughs> uh, how to, to to be more performant for our company. It's only uh, not only a question of uh, uh, of uh, motivate the people. There are other things anyway. Uh, organization process etc uh, I don't know if you have uh, answered correctly the, the question uh, Martin you spoke about um, I hope you can. No, Michele, please. yeah I don't know if you can hear me well I have to shut right. down the video no no yes I understand of course I the chamber uh, the Italian chamber uh, have uh, nine employees so let's say we are a small company and everyone yeah. has uh, his own individualities. But as you said, of course, there are projects that uh, boost uh, some part of the team to higher performance because they are more interested. Uh, some other project, uh, no, let's say some, in some other cases, you have to face uh, boredom and sometimes you need to push mm. a bit more of the stuff. But uh, I, understand, uh, I understand what you mean, let's say, uh, the overview of uh, these uh, labels on generation can help you to frame better your stuff and better understand how to deal with it. Yes, in, in this case, uh, you answer my question. Okay, okay, fine. <laughs> and indeed, uh, indeed, it's all, uh, you cannot just uh, 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 
think about the generation and uh, and copy this uh, generation label for an individual because uh, uh, I'm kind of uh, Y generation sometimes and I'm kind of X, X generation sometimes, etc. So uh, it's a uh, it gives you insights yeah. to not to do too many wrong things because we you will do wrong things. Management is about uh, uh, making some. Uh, Unforced errors and, and learning from uh, your own mistakes, uh, usually on, on daily life. So uh, it just gives you some tracks to uh, to, to keep on or to uh, step back and to say, oh, why did I do something wrong? Maybe because I didn't face this kind of situation or I didn't think in this kind of environment. So uh, put uh, put yourself in the shoes of the other generation can help on that point. I'd like to touch upon a point that uh, Martin made, which is like the personal relationship, uh, which is very important in Thailand. Uh, and I want to ask, like, for the personal relationship, yes, it's important, but many people value a work relationship also. So, what? how is how is the best way to balance the work or the personal relationship? Because let's say if you get too personal, things can get complicated as well. You know. So, any experience regarding this in your consultancy uh, with other companies, if you would like to share with us, Martin and, and John? Uh, you mean with your employee or with the rules? Because uh, there, there can be a lot of things to, to say about the, this one. I remember uh, uh, for, for uh, in hospitals, uh, people uh, ask me, okay, uh, the white generation always have uh, their, their telephone, their mobile, and they have uh, to, 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 to let, uh, to leave that in the locker because, uh, okay, in terms of uh, uh, security in hospitals, uh, they have to, but they, they don't have. So what do we have to do? How do we have to manage uh, these things? Because the first, all the personal, uh, all the contacts uh, are in uh, this, uh, this telephone. So it's the life of uh, the white generation that is on the telephone and not only a telephone to call. And so, yeah. Uh, in, maybe in that case, maybe, maybe on, on the case, for example, uh, like you said, for example, uh, when uh, to maintain a personal relationship, maybe let's say you have dinner with your employees, uh, you take the relationship to a more personal level. Uh, mm -hmm. But some people, let's say, they, 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 they would like to separate that with work because work and your personal life is two different things. Uh, yes, so yes. the question is in this sphere. Yes, uh, it's more in the personal generation. Uh, okay, very interesting question. Um, the, 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 the fact is that the white generation need that you know them uh, personally. That means that uh, in comparison to uh, the relationship you could have with the uh, X generation when they put the, the frontier quite, there is a big frontier uh, between uh, the job and, uh, the, and the personal life. Here with the Y generation, the frontier is not that, is thinner, okay? But that doesn't mean that, that uh, there is no frontier. So sometimes it's uh, very important to anyway to, 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 to leave a frontier between you and and uh, and the other person. And if I can add something, it comes also for your 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 own point of view. If you are not comfortable about sharing uh, uh, during uh, informal dinners with your employees, don't do so. But let them do by themselves. Uh, let them having these informal dinners, even though you don't like being with them, and you come only once. Uh, a semester or once a quarter or something like that. So uh, because uh, um, and let them know why you uh, uh, you are, um, uh, mm -hmm. why you are uh, uncomfortable with that. Uh, it's not only follow every trend they want to do to follow uh, and uh, share personal things because they want to share personal things. If you're, you're not uh, willing uh, willing to do so, keep your boundaries. Keep the boundaries you need to keep for yourself. But just explain to them. That's my yeah, additional you're point. You're not compelled to get drunk with your employees. It yeah, would be sure. very difficult then to analyze. <laughs> uh, yeah, I have some cases, uh, personal cases uh, from my, uh, my ex-manager. <laughs> uh, then it's very difficult to manage uh, in a managing situation. But OK, get, uh, get to, to know people more personally. It doesn't mean that you, you, you go uh, 
uh, and eat with them every night. You know, you see what I mean. <laughs> okay. Uh, since we are running out of time, maybe we can open for the last question. If if anyone has one more question, or otherwise we can close the session. So we just wait a few seconds and see if we have another question. Uh, until until then, uh, I just want to uh, let everyone know. Maybe Martin, you can put your contact, your email address, or something on the chat. Uh, so if anyone has any questions, they can uh, feel free to email you. Uh, and also we will share your presentation with all the participants. Uh, so if they need to go through it or they have any, any, um, any, did they need any help or any questions in the future, they can uh, uh, get in touch with you. Yeah, yeah, I, I will put my uh, number if some people want to, uh, to, to call me. Don't hesitate. Okay. So I think no more questions and uh, maybe we can close. Uh, thank you, Martin. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, thank uh, you. John, for your time and, and uh, the questions. Uh, I'm not sure if Mich Michele is there yet, but... Uh, yes, yes. I'm here. Okay. So again, thank you very much uh, for your time and the interesting seminar. And uh, we will publish uh, the registration of the seminar on the KCC YouTube channel very soon. So also you will be able to keep in touch with ERIs and Martin also through the YouTube channel. Uh, again, thank you everyone for participating. Thank you ERIs. Thank you Martin again. Thank you very much uh, to TICC to make that possible. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Have a nice day everyone.